So I, went, I was thinking about female friendship a lot, and by the way, these two women, I'm very honored to say, have been my friends for a very long time too. Yes, we have. Uh, and um, and the, one of the things that I read about female friendship is something that Cervantes said. He said, you know, you can you can tell a lot about someone, in this case, a woman, by the company that she keeps. So let's start with. <laughs> We're in big trouble. <laughs> Hand me one of those waters. I'm extremely dry. <laughs> You're taking up our time. We have a very limited. Just yeah. being with her sucks the life out of me. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Anyway, so, <clears throat> sorry. Tell me what? <laughs> what do you look for in a friend? I look for someone who has a sense of fun, who's um, audacious, who um, who's forthcoming, who has politics, who has even a small scrap of passion for the planet. Uh, someone who's decent, has a sense of justice, and who thinks I'm worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was thinking this morning. I don't even know what I would do without my women friends. I mean, it's I have my friends, therefore I am. <laughs> no, it's true. I exist because I have my women friends. They, you're one of them. I don't know about you, but anyway, <laughs> uh, they, they, you know, they make me stronger. They make me smarter. They make me braver. They tap me on the shoulder when I might be in need of course correcting. <laughs> And most of them are a good deal younger than me too. You know, I mean, it's nice. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do. I include you in that because listen, you know, it's nice to have somebody still around to play with and learn from when you're getting toward the end. I'm glad. And I'm, I'm glad approaching. To, I'll be there sooner no, than I'm you. I'm glad to have you parallel aging alongside me. <laughs> I'm showing you I the am. way. <laughs> no, well, you are, and you have. Yeah. Well, Thank as you. we grow older and as we go through different kinds of life's journeys, what do you do to keep your friendships vital and alive? Well, you have to use a lot. She of doesn't invite me over much. I'll tell you that. I have to. I have to use a lot of social media. You be quiet now. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I and I go through. I look through my emails. I look through my texts to find my friends so I can answer them as quickly as possible because I know they need my counsel. <laughs> They need my support because most of my friends are writers or activists or actors, and you're all three, and a long string of other descriptive phrases. And uh, and I, I want to get to you as soon as possible. I want you to know that I'm there for you. Do you do emojis? Oh, no. It's mm. embarrassing. I'm really into emojis. No, I spell out my, <laughs> I spell out my words of happiness and congratulations and sadness. You spell it right out. There. I spell You're it every so letter. <laughs> Such a purist. You know, as I've gotten older, I've 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 understood more the importance of friendships, and so I really make an effort to reach out and make play dates, not let too much time go by. I read a lot, so I, as Lily knows all too well, I send my books that I like. I send to my friends. When we knew we would be here today, you sent me a lot of books about women, female friendships, and I was so. Surprised to see how many books, how much research has been done recently. And were you grateful? I was grateful. <laughs> <laughs> and, and wait, no, yeah. it's really important because this is another example of how women are overlooked, put aside, marginalized. There's been very little research done on us, even though we've volunteered lots of That's times. That's true. <laughs> And what the, but the, you know, this is really exciting, and you all will be interested in this. The Harvard Medical School study has shown that women who have close female friendships are less likely to uh, to develop uh, impairments, physical impairments, as they age, and they are are likely to be seen to be living much more vital, exciting, and longer, joy joyful lives. We I think, live five years longer than men. I think I'd trade the years for joy. <laughs> <laughs> and but the most important part is they found this. The, the results were so so exciting and so conclusive that the researchers found that not having close female friends 
is detrimental to your health as much as smoking or being overweight. Wow. And, you know, and there's something else, too. I've said my part. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, listen to my part, because okay. there's an additional thing that, because they only, for years, decades, they only researched men when they, when they were trying to understand stress. Only very recently have they researched what happens to women when we're stressed. And it turns out that when we're stressed, women, we, we get, our bodies get flooded by oxytocin. Um, which is a, a feel-good, calming, stress-reducing hormone, which is also is, is increased when we're with our women friends. Mm. You know, and I, I do think that's one reason why we, we live longer. And I feel so bad for men, because they don't have that. <laughs> Testosterone in men diminishes the effects of oxytocin. Well, when you and I and Dolly made 9 to 5, Oh, we laughed, we laughed, we did, we laughed so much. We found we had so much in common, and it's so different. Here she is, like Hollywood royalty. I'm like a tough kid from Detroit. She's a southern kid from a poor town in, in uh, Tennessee. And we found we were so in sync as women, and uh, we must have, we laughed till we must have added at least a decade Probably. onto our, li our <laughs> lifespan. I think. We sure crossed our legs a lot. <laughs> If you know what I mean. Well, I feel like I think, I'm adding I think a decade we all know right what you now. Mean. It's a matter of <laughs> You're adding decades to our lives right now. <laughs> so among the books that Jane sends us both to read on female friendship <laughs> was one by a woman we admire greatly, Sister Joan Chistetter, who, who said about female friendship that uh, women, uh, women friends are not just a social act. They're a spiritual act. Do you think of your friends as, as spiritual? Do they add something spiritual to your lives? Spiritual, I absolutely think that. And uh, because especially people you've known a long time, people you've spent time with, I can see the spiritual essence inside them, the, the tenderness, the vulnerability. Um, there's actually kind of a love, an element of love in the relationship. I just see deeply into your soul. Do you think that, Jane, most friends just want to go powers. that deep? Well, there's all kinds of friends. There's, you know, business friends and, and party friends. I got a lot of those. <laughs> and, um, and, but the, the oxytocin-producing friendships have... They feel spiritual because it's, it's a heart opening, right? You know, we, we go deep. And I find that I, I shed tears a lot with my, with my in, intimate friends. Um, not because I'm sad, but because I'm so touched um, and inspired by them. And you know, one of you is going to go soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, two of us are sitting here, Lily. Which one are you talking about? <laughs> and I always think when women talk about their friendships that men always look a little mystified. What are the differences, in your opinion, oh. between men friendships and, and women friendships? There's, there's a lot of difference, and, and I think we have to have a lot of empathy for men that, that, that they don't have what we have, which I think may be why they die sooner. <laughs> I, I, I have a lot of compassion for men, because women, no kidding, we, women's relationships, our friendships are... are full disclosure, we go deep, they're revelatory, uh, we, we risk vulnerability. This is something men don't do, you know. I mean, how many times have I asked you, am I doing okay? Did I really screw up there? You know, that You're kind doing of thing. Yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, we ask, we ask questions like that of our women friends, and, and, um, and men don't, you know, people describe women's relationships as face-to-face, -face, whereas men's friendships are more side-by-side. -side. I mean, most of the time, we, men don't want to reveal their emotions. They want to bury deeper feelings. I mean, that's the general conventional thought. They would rather go off in their man cave and watch a game or hit golf balls or talk about sports or hunting or cars or have sex. I mean, it's just a kind of, it's a more manly behavior. You, you meant that they talk the, about sex? I meant, yeah. no, well, they might have sex, sex if they could get somebody in their man cave to... <laughs> <laughs> but, what, but you know something really, though, that I find very interesting? And again, psychologists didn't know this until relatively recently, 
is that men are born every bit as relational as women are. If you if you look at films of newborn baby boys and girls, you'll see the baby boys just like the girls gazing into their mother's eyes, you know, needing that relational uh, exchange of energy. When the mother looks away, they could see the um, the dismay on the child. Even the boy would would cry. They need relationships. So the question is, why, as they grow older? Does that change? And the answer is patriarchal culture, which says to, to, to boys and young men that to to be needy of relationship, to be emotional with someone is is girly. You know that a real man is, you know, doesn't ask directions or express a need, or you know they don't go to doctors if they feel bad. They don't ask for help. There's a quote that I really like: Men fear that becoming we will erase his I. You know his sense of self, whereas women's sense of self has always been kind of porous. But our we is our saving grace. It's it's what makes us、uh, strong. It's not that we're better than men. We just don't have our masculinity to prove. And well, that's a Gloria Steinem quote. No.、I'm、so we can express our 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 humanity. I know、is. you know who she is, but I think it's a. <laughs> No, but it's a great quote. I think we're not better than men. We just don't have our masculinity to prove, and that's really important. But men are so inculcated in the in the culture to to be comfortable in the patriarchy, and we've got to make something different happen. Well, who gets women's friendships are like a renewable source of power. That's well. That's what's exciting about this subject is because our friendships, female friendships, are just a hop to our sisterhood. And sisterhood can be a very powerful force to make to give the world to make it what it should be the things that humans desperately need. It is why we're talking about it because women's friendships are, as you said, Jane, a renewable source of power. So how do we use that power? Well, women are the fastest-growing demographic in the world, especially older women, and if we harness our power, we can change the world. And guess what? We need to. And we need to do it soon. And one of the things that we need to do, and we can do it as women. For one thing, we kind of set the consumer standards. We need to consume less. We in the Western world need to consume less. And when we buy things, we need to buy things that are made locally. When we buy food, we need to buy food that's grown locally. We are the ones that need to get off the grid. We need to make ourselves independent from fossil fuels. And, and the fossil fuel companies, the Exxon's and the Shell oils and those bad guys, because they are, are going to tell us that we can't do it without going back to the Stone Age. You know that the alternatives just quite aren't quite there yet, and that's not true. There are countries in the world right now that are living mostly on renewable energy and doing just fine. And they tell us that if we do、uh, wean ourselves from fossil fuel, that we're going to be back in the Stone Age. And, and in fact, if we begin to use renewable energy and not drill in the Arctic and not、oh、drill in the, you know, the Alberta、uh, tar sands, yeah, right? That that we will be there'll be more democracy and more jobs and more well-being and and okay, it's women maybe, that are going to lead the we, way. Maybe we have the momentum to start a third wave feminist movement with our sisterhood around the world, with women we don't see, women we may never meet, but we join together that way. Because、uh, I mean, our Aristotle said most pe- people would die without male friendships because and the operative word here was male.、Yeah. And they,、uh, because they thought that friendship should be between equals, and women were not considered equal. They didn't think we had souls. You know, no, the Greeks. Exactly.、Yeah. That shows you just how limited Aristotle was. <laughs> <laughs> and wait, no. Here's the best part. It's like you know, men do need women now. The planet needs women. The U.S. Constitution needs women. We are not even in the Constitution. E.R. You're talking about the Equal Rights Amendment, right? Yes. Justice Justice、uh, Ginsburg said、uh, something like, "Since the, the every Constitution that's been written since the end of World War II included a provision that made women citizens of equal stature, but ours does not." So that would be a good place to start. Very, <laughs> very mild. Right. <laughs> 
And, and gender equality, it's like a tide. It would lift all boats, not it just would. women. Needing new role models on how to do that, how to be friends, how to think about our power in different ways as consumers, as, as citizens of the world. And this is what makes Jane and Lily a role model of how women can be friends for a very long time, and even if they occasionally disagree. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you both. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.